Well, we'll talk about um, the issue of vaccinations. Now, um, it emerged that the steam packet uh, via these hearings yesterday had requested for uh, vaccinations in, in I think the 4th of December. 4th or the 5th, I can't remember which. Yes, they did. And, and that, that request seemed to get lost. I mean, Completely. W- what's your view on, on the way these processes worked? Well, it didn't, <laughs> is, the, is the short answer. Uh, let, let me sort of, because it's a, it's a radio interview and we've got to tighten things right down, let me just almost talk in, in little snapshots. First of all, the chief minister came in and washed his hands of it and said it was a matter for officers. Then the chief secretary came in and said, well, he was reliant on his officers. And then the director of public health came in. Yeah, I can't remember whether that's the right sequence. but um, And from the director of public health, um, she expressed um, views that attached to completely to very clunky rules related to whether the vaccination process actually did or did not inhibit transmission and also referred to the rules uh, under JCVI as to whether or not the steam packet crew should be vaccinated. Now, that was their bureaucratic clunky world. In reality, there was a need to do a risk assessment about to what degree would the new Kent variant be transmissible through the ferry service. That was all that was required. Now, <clears throat> the steam packet, from a business common sense point of view, recognised themselves that there were growing dangers. And as early as the 4th of December, uh, said to government, goodness me, this is a real worry. Can we please vaccinate the the crew? That would diminish the transmissibility of a new variant whose transmissibility to common sense people was accelerating, which is why it was so successful. I mean, you don't need to be a medic or a clinician to recognise that. The steam packet recognised it, in my view. And as you say, you know, it just got lost. Nothing happened. That prompted me um, very early February, say about the 9th of February, to raise an, um, an emergency question in Keys, saying, when on earth are we going to see the crew vaccinated? Eventually, I think the Council of Ministers got round, to, reluctantly it would seem, got round to the point that, yes, OK, we'll vaccinate the crew. I wonder, and I haven't asked the question yet, when it was that the vaccination process was finally concluded. It was probably, let me guess, and I could be corrected here, and I'd be happy to do to be corrected, end of February, early March. In the meantime, you know, we all know what happened. Mm. It hit the fan in a big way and cost the Isle of Man millions. So how did it get lost? Do we know? Because, because the government couldn't do a risk assessment. They just were simply following clunky rules and directions. Well, who do we mean by the government here? Cause well, we, we, well I, that's a good question because the, the politicians are relying on the officers and the officers are relying on external direction, which is historical. In other words, JCVI direction about who you should vaccinate and in what order was a, a, a UK nationwide process. It didn't in any way relate specifically to the, to the ferry service. So that's what they were relying on. Risk assessments in business, and you know my background, it's all about, uh, in part at least, risk assessment. And you, you have to anticipate what's going to happen, not what necessarily has happened in the fast. And this was a fast-moving situation. Mm. That there was a complete dearth uh, in in terms of the government's position about trying to do a risk assessment on the special circumstances related to the the ferry's position trying to run a service to the Isle of Man with unavoidably mixed crews. Mm. Well, the chief secretary said to you that they had to follow uh, you know, the civil servants had to follow the, the medical advice. I mean, and if they were to depart from that, that would be them. Seriously, you know, risking, you know, going well, against I, I, the I, science. So surely it's the politicians who needed to make this case. Uh, well, the interesting thing is going to be that the government is also doing its own examination of this matter through Stephen Hines's office. And Stephen's headed up the uh, audit advisory service. And the audit advisory service, uh, their main job is to do effectively risk assessments in the departments. Now, 
where we've been so far, the whole focus has been on the steam packet as if somehow the fault was with them. Clearly, the whole structure of government being able to respond and produce a, a fast-moving risk assessment is in the frame here. So it will be very interesting to see where the St Stephen focuses on this because as I see things, and remember, this, I'm not representing the PAC view here. I'm representing my view as it related to this whole issue of getting the vaccinations done is that the government simply failed to produce a sensible risk assessment which on the ground from a common sense point of view definitely required that the crew be vaccinated and it didn't happen and the rest is history. Mm. Well you mentioned oh I think it was you in the committee that government seemed to show an almost militant reluctance to do just that and depart from the JVCI, yeah. at least in the early days. Yeah, the politicians had hid behind the officers and the officers hid behind so UK, UK rules. What I accounts mean, for that? Uh, don't like being told to change their approach? Um, I, I just don't think that they, they've shown... I mean, it's a, it's a pretty uh, heavy thing to say. I, I don't think they've shown competence here in terms of being able to construct a risk assessment. The, the politicians should have been onto it. And the officers should have been onto it. Neither of them, neither parties were. So it, it, it does raise a very, very big question. And, and on the oral session, I did raise this with the uh, chief secretary. And I think the record shows that he admitted there's, there's, a, there's a problem to be resolved. Because my view was you can't do this again. I mean, if the variant changes such, it mutates into an area beyond vaccination then they have to make very, very early, door, uh, early day um, decisions about whether or not they're going to take action. They can't rely on some uh, far uh, distant rule related to JCVI or anything else. They have to make the rules on the ground in the Isle of Man for the Isle of Man's best interest, and they didn't do it. Risk assessments, surely they are the responsibility of the organisations involved, though. So, I mean, I think well, Dr Hewitt this, said yeah, it no, should have this, been steam packet. In this case... It, Yes, the steam packet had a responsibility. They recognised the problem as non-medics, took it to those who should have known and said, we have a problem, this is what we think should happen. Mm. And the government completely ignored them. It was never a single party issue. What you've tended to see in the public environment is the government trying, as it were, to push responsibility over the steam packet away from themselves. Well, clearly we now know that, no, that's not the case. The government had responsibilities to carry out here and they didn't do them.